Although he wrote the piece at his summer home in Switzerland in 1959, Randall Thompson's Frostiana Seven Country Songs premiered at Amherst Regional High School in October of that year. The work set seven poems by Robert Frost, who had lived in Amherst for several years, and was commissioned for the town's bicentennial. The first performance of the piece was given by a number of local singers making up the bicentennial chorus, with piano accompaniment and Thompson conducting. As the story goes, Frost was so impressed with this performance that he stood up and shouted, Sing that again, after the piece reached its conclusion. Thompson orchestrated the work for chamber orchestra and chorus in 1965. The full suite consists of seven movements, but only two, the first and the last, make use of a full choir. The other five movements are scored for either sopranos and altos, or tenors and basses. Although both Frost's poetry and Thompson's music are frequently criticized for being unsophisticated, a closer look at both the music and text reveal that to not be the case. And when the poetry and the music combine, the result is a layered piece that includes text painting, folk references, and both musical and literary metaphors. The first movement of the suite sets what is perhaps Frost's most famous poem, The Road Not Taken. One of the influences that Thompson frequently draws on in his output at large is that of early music. Take, for instance, the opening melody of this movement. The treatment of dissonance and the rise and fall of the melody are both grounded in contrapuntal techniques from early music. In setting each stanza of the poem, Thompson uses what we call a strophic form. He sets different words to the same music. But instead of each stanza being exactly the same, he makes small changes here and there. In the second stanza, he varies the rhythm slightly to better fit the text and adds short rests. In the third stanza, the melody ventures higher than in the first two stanzas, the closest he comes to a climax in this movement. Thompson also makes effective use of pictorial devices, commonly referred to as text painting. This was a technique he may have borrowed from Renaissance music. For example, later in the movement, he uses a suspension to set the word sigh onomatopoeically in the tenor line. The orchestra also interjects between each line of this stanza. But not all of his text painting examples are quite so obvious. An orchestral interlude briefly shifts the piece into its parallel major and increases the tempo. Perhaps this passage is meant to depict the passing of time before the chorus comes back in with a repetition of the final line of the poem. For the final movement, Thompson sets Frost's poem to something like a star. In a further example of text painting, the sopranos float on a high D on the words O star over the rest of the chorus, which sing the text of the poem. The sopranos here can be considered to be representing an image of the distant stars hovering in the sky.
The poem and the music also both represent humankind's search for answers about the universe. The chorus sings, say something to us we can learn by heart, and when alone repeat. But when the star simply replies with, I burn, the chorus demands more specificity, and as they do, the music builds to a fortissimo. Thompson builds up to a second climax as he approaches the titular text of the poem. He brings the dynamics, the pitch, and the energy back down as the piece comes to its conclusion after that dramatic crescendo.